Hi, everybody. I'm Carrie Diamond, founder of Cherry Bomb. I want to welcome all of you to a very Cherry Bomb Friendsgiving. It's our uh, week and a half long celebration of food, gratitude, and new traditions. And I'm really excited that you could join us for this wonderful afternoon panel. It is our all-star pie panel, and we couldn't be more excited because we really have some pie all-stars for you. I am personally very excited for this panel. I realized I did not uh, pre-plan as well as I should have. I should have actually had some pie here to enjoy while we hear these uh, pie pros talk about what they do. They're gonna be talking about um, tips, tricks, trends, you name it. Um, so get your questions ready for them. I know a lot of you are you know, Zoom experts at this point, but um, you know you've got the chat box below. So I see some of you are chatting already. I would love to know uh, where all of you are Zooming in from. So just let us know in the chat and say hi. And then there's the Q&A box. I noticed someone has already is already using the Q&A box. Did it start? Yes. <laughs> we have officially started. So welcome again, everybody, as you come in. Oh, this is fantastic. We have folks, oh my God, totally Zooming in. I saw Eugene, Oregon, Portland, Cambridge, Massachusetts, Chicago, Illinois, Lon London. Wow, London. Um, well, hello, everybody. I'm going to take a look at this and see where you're all Baltimore, Chicago, San Jose. This is wonderful. So, so excited. Again, I'm Carrie Diamond, founder of Cherry Bomb. We are about to get underway. Every, I see some people are still joining us. This might be one of the biggest Zoom events we've ever done. So hugely exciting. Thank you for joining. All right, so let's get down to some business. Today, we've got the All-Star Pie Panel, which is going to start any minute. It's part of our very Cherry Bomb Friendsgiving contents going on all week long, this weekend, a little bit of next week. And we're so happy you could join us for some of these events. Some highlights you might not know about. Uh, tomorrow night, Tuesday, 7 p.m. EST, we have um, our new Southern Traditions panel. We've got a fantastic lineup for that. After this is over, you can go RSVP for that panel. We also have on Wednesday, our Kitchen Fairy Godmothers conversation with Melissa Clark and Susan Spungen, two of my favorites. I'm sure they're two of your favorites as well. That's gonna be three o'clock on Wednesday. You can sign up for that as well when this is over. And then Thursday night, we have a very special conversation with Kristen Kish. I know a lot of you love Kristen. She was on our cover a few years ago. She is the executive chef of Arlo Gray. And that is going to be Thursday night, 7 p.m. EST. So you can sign up for that as well. And uh, you can check out the schedule. It is in the chat um, in case you want to click on that. But everything is over on cherrybomb.com. You can check out all the upcoming content. You can check out our shop, which has everybody's cookbooks. A lot of our panelists have amazing cookbooks, um, as we're about to hear. You can check that out and a lot more. All right. So here, here's what's going to happen. We've got our panel. And then we are going to have some Q&A. So like I said, use the Q&A box or use the chat and we'll um, grab all your questions. Then we've got a very special demo with uh, Lauren Co. right after that. She's going to show us how she decorates one of her very unique pies. If you follow Lauren, you know she's kind of a genius when it comes to pie decorating. So we have to thank our friends at Kerrygold. If you know me, you know, my favorite butter is Kerrygold. I've always got some in the fridge, but um, Kerrygold has been a wonderful sponsor of our Friendsgiving event. And um, because of the folks at Kerrygold, we are able to keep all the content free. So, um, so thank you to them. If you see Kerrygold in your grocery store, be sure to check them out. And then I also have to thank and introduce our friend, Jesse Sheehan. Um, can you bring uh, Donna and Kat are working behind the scenes for Cherry Bomb. So thanks to Donna and Kat. Could you bring Jesse up? <gasps> Jesse Sheehan, hi. hi. How are you? I'm well, Carrie, how are you? I am great. I have one of your wonderful books right here, The Vintage Baker. I hope a lot of you um, have seen Jesse's book. Hopefully you own Jesse's book. She is a wonderful baker and uh, a wonderful friend and a great member of the Bomb Squad. And we couldn't think of anyone better to moderate this panel. Jesse, can you believe all these people who are, I'm shocked yeah. how many people I know, our, super, our super exciting. Yay! 
I guess pie is a subject that everybody just loves, huh? Absolutely. And I'm really excited. As Carrie said, I hope you guys have questions that you want to share with me and I would that I can share with the panel and I would love that. I'm probably going to go through like some crust questions and some filling questions and I kind of have organized it that way. But please ask your questions and Carrie will shoot them my way maybe at the end-ish. Yeah, yeah. So I will see you in about 30 minutes. Thank you again to all the pie panelists, the bomb squad and Carrie Gold. And uh, I'll see you in a little bit. Have fun, Jesse. Thanks, honey. Okay. Hey, bye everyone. Bye. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce our panel. And I think as I introduce them, they're going to pop into Zoom. The first person I want to introduce is Lauren Co. And Lauren is an artist and a writer and a self-taught home baker. And look, everybody on this panel is amazing, but I'm going to keep my bio short-ish so that we can move along. But anyway, um, Lauren, as, as Carrie said, is known for her colorful geometric pie decorating style. And she has this iconic iconic signature spoke design um, that has been dubbed the modern lattice. Very fancy. And her first cookbook, Pyometry, was just released this last month. Did Erin, I mean, did Lauren come up? Hmm, I don't see her, but maybe she's here. Ah, hi, Lauren. <laughs> Yay! So that's Lauren. Okay, next is Lisa Ludwinski. Lisa is the owner of, um, <laughs> Hi, honey. Hi. Um, Lisa's the owner of Sister Pie Bakery in Detroit, which I have been to, and it is an amazing bakery. And she opened it back in 2015 with a big hearted mission of making delicious food and treats for her community, and she has succeeded. Her book, Sister Pie, came out in 2018. And here's a fun fact Lisa and I both love cream cheese. I just wanted you guys to know that. Um, then we have Amanda, who I just met in, I'm calling this real life, even though it's Zoom life, who I just met in real life. Yay, Amanda! Hi! <laughs> Amanda Hello. Um, has dedicated her career to serving communities and families in need since opening her bakery, Crust by Mac, in Baltimore during the pandemic, so that ain't easy. Um, but she has raised over $3,000 for local minority-owned female forward organizations. Yay, Amanda. Um, and then we have Erin, my pal Erin, who will, ah, there she is. Um, Erin Jean McDowell is an author, recipe developer, and food stylist. She's written two amazing books. The first, The Fearless Baker, now Book on Pie. And she's a regular contributor to the New York Times, Food 52, and pure, wow. And that's Erin. Um, so like I said, guys, I thought I would just kind of throw out some pie questions. I'm going to ask them to one of you, but if someone else wants to answer, go for it. Um, and I'm going to start with Lauren and I'm going to start with vinegar or vodka or neither. And for those in the audience, people often put a little vinegar in their pie crust. They put a little vodka in their pie crust or they don't. They just put cold water. And I want to know what Lauren does. Um, I personally just use water. So the fewer ingredients I can use, the easier and the simpler, I think. Um, occasionally I'll substitute uh, vegetable juice or fruit juice to make naturally colored pie doughs. And I'll leave that vinegar and vodka to um, people who prefer those ingredients, but um, I use just water. Straight just up. Juice. I love it. Yeah. I'm a vinegar gal myself, but I love that anyway. I love your work. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to ask Lisa, food processor or by hand? Again, some people are really into the food processor because they think the butter doesn't melt because you put it into a machine. Other people really want to get their hands in there. What do you think? Well, personally, I think that pie always tastes better when your hands are involved because you really put your blood, sweat and tears into it. And so while I do not, I'm not against the food processor by any means, I think part of the fun of making a pie is playing with the dough. I feel you. I feel you. Um, Aaron, would you say all butter, shortening lard? Do you ever do a mixture? Do you ever just, you tell me what you do. Well, so again, I feel like I'm in the same boat as, as Lisa is that I am never going to tell anybody not to use something because that's the great yep. thing about pie. There are so many ways that you can do it. Um, but for me, it's all butter all the time. It's, that's what I like. I like the way that's it cool. tastes. It tastes the best, but um, I learned using a mixture of butter and shortening. And a lot of times in my family, uh, folks still use lard. So again, they all work and it's yep. kind of comes down to personal preference and also understanding which one is easier for you and which one gives yep. you the best results. 
but butter does taste the best, I think. Yes, I feel you. I have to say, I like to use cream cheese because I find it a teeny bit easier to, to, I'm not great with the pie like you guys, and I find it a little bit easier to use, and then it has that little bit of tang. Um, I think mm, that maybe is, for sure. yeah, that's like a Rose Levy Berenbaum thing, maybe. Um, Amanda, par baking. Are you like, do you par bake your crust only if you're going to do a no bake filling? Or do you par bake it if you're just filling it with apple pie? I'm always myself, like a little bit like, would this yeah. be fun if I par baked it? <laughs> I definitely would par bake. Like when it comes to apple pies and yep. things that are a little denser, I'm really like team par bake because I want it to be nice and crispy all the way through, no soggy crust over here. Yep. Um, so I love a par bake. It gives you like that crisp finish. And it also helps the pie come out of the pan. The release is better. Yep. Um, so I really just think it depends on what kind of pie you're baking, but definitely par bake. Okay. I feel you. I feel you. Erin, I had a cookie crumb crust question because people sometimes forget with pies, it's not always about pie dough. I personally love a cookie crumb crust. And I and um, a mutual friend of ours, Miro, a pastry chef in New York, did a demo recently and he put egg whites in his cookie crumb crust. What Talk to me about that. I had never seen that before and I was extremely intrigued. So I actually love to add egg whites to press-in style crusts. Um, and I, I actually don't always do it with a cookie style crust, but the advantage of it is you're giving something with a little bit more structure that's gonna help it bake up crisp. Also sometimes cookie crumbs, um, even if you've uh, made them adhere really well to one another, they aren't gonna unmold into a really nice slice the way that uh, a pie dough or pie crust will. So adding a little bit of egg can also assist with that, with kind of keeping it more as one whole crust instead of some crumbles falling off. Um, I use it in my book for a nut-based crust, that instead yeah. of using cookies, you grind up nuts really finely and you use egg whites to- um, That's a binder. Combine. And I just have to say really quick, I'm also team par bake. Just team <laughs> I love the poster. I wrote it down because I was afraid I was going to have to just hold it up here. Like, no, I'm team par bake. Just got to got to tell it. <laughs> um, Lisa, sometimes when I make a crumb topping on a pie, I don't, I forget to like make a little hole in the top. So, because sometimes I feel like my crumb toppings can be so thick that I'm not like venting. When you're making a crumb topping, are you either being careful not to leave space for bubbling fruit? Or do you like make sure that there is like a little vent just like you do when you do a double crusted pie? So sometimes we will put a little hole in the center and that's typically when we're training employees how to look for a bubbling filling to know that the pie is done. But generally speaking, the filling bubbles so much that it's going to push through the crumble. And so we see these little bubble spots kind of all over the top of the crumble and it seems to work out just fine. Okay. So and oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, are you guys an oats crumble baker? Like, are you putting oats in most of your crumbles? Do you have well, some straight up? This is something I'm always curious about because some people call a streusel something that has oats and some people call a crumble something that has oats. So in my experience, I call a crumble something with oats and a streusel something without oats. Which is better. Interesting. I feel you. I hear that. Um, Lauren, um, when you are making your gorgeous, beautiful lattice, and forgive me if it, lattice is not always the right word, your geometrical shapes, um, do you, do you, because I read something about, I don't usually do lattice because it's just a little tricky for me. And I read something recently that if you're doing it, you should kind of almost build it next to you on the counter and then lift it up and place it on your pie. Now that's just straight up lattice, not what you do. But how, what do you think about that? Is it easier for people to try to create your designs off of the pie as it were? Like how, how, what, how do you make the top of the pie, those components easiest is it on your pie or is it off? Sorry, that was not very articulate. I mean, no, I'm no, I totally get it. Um, I would say it depends on the design. So okay. for something like my signature spoke, that's pretty straightforward and simple and actually really quick. I just uh, do the design directly on top of the pie. For any sort of lattice or woven design, I always do it on a sheet of parchment paper. That way, if things get warm, you can pop it back in the fridge. And also once the entire design is completed, I will slide a baking sheet under that sheet of parchment and stick it in the freezer for you know 20 minutes until it's solid. And then I can pick it up in one solid piece, lay it on top of the pie and your design is still 
pristine and exactly how you wove it sure. and it makes it to the pie in one piece. So ultimately, like a, just like if somebody's wondering how to approach lattice in a way that's going to be simpler for them, you would recommend, even if they're not trying something super tricky, try doing it next to you. That way you can put it away. That, that putting away part is really smart because that's what happens. It gets too soft and then you can't lift it or you can't work with it in a way exactly. that yeah, and since the golden rule of pie baking is to keep everything cold, I think it's really helpful to kind of construct all those things on your parchment and that way you can chill it down if you need to. You know what people forget, and maybe this is just me who forgets it because I'm basically the most impatient person on the planet, but pie making is so much about patience because you have to be cool with the, with taking the break to put the thing into the refrigerator. I, I'm always like, no, 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 I think I can make it work and then of course I can't. Um, okay, final, final crust question. Um, Amanda, egg wash and sugar, like a sparkling sugar on the tops of pies, or just egg wash, or maybe a brush of heavy cream. What's your like go-to with a double crusted pie, or even with the edge, if it's if it's a cream pie? I always egg wash the egg, the edges. Okay. okay. Um, but for me, it depends on if I'm making a sweet pie or a savory pie. Okay. So the savory pies, I like them to have a nice golden brown color. So instead of okay. using the egg white. I'll get a, the egg yolk really nice and thick, pour a little cream in it, whisk it up and brush it all over. Yep. And it creates a nice, beautiful, like dome-like shape. It actually like flakes up. It's so good on savory pies. Sweet pies, egg wash, nice and light and finish yep. and dust of sugar on top. Okay, here's a, just a slightly, I'm gonna throw a little controversy here, peeps. I've been now making my egg wash with like an egg and salt. And because the salt kind of breaks down the white. And I wonder, is anyone, am I crazy? Is anyone else, is everybody else putting a little bit of cream or milk in with their egg wash? What do you guys, let's do a quick uh, rapid fire. Tell me your egg wash. Just Please. eggs. Just eggs, okay. Lauren. Uh, I do a whole egg and a splash of cream, but only on non-colored pie doughs. I never egg wash on colored pie And Amanda's the same. Erin, what about you? I do one egg and a little bit of water and a pinch of salt. I've oh, always good. done salt. Thank yeah. God. I thought like, oh. where did I get this idea? Okay. <laughs> um, just quickly, peeps, um, pie plates. And Erin, I was going to ask you, um, glass versus ceramic or metal? Yes, yeah, so I was going to say, I'm going to need a third option. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I, I love to recommend glass for beginners because of the advantage of being able to see through it. And yes. since I think proper baking is one of the hardest parts for people to understand about making a pie, be, that is really an advantage, but it's not my favorite material for pie plates. I prefer ceramic or metal, but um, I prefer metal because of its non-stickability, yes. uh, especially. And I prefer both metal and ceramic for their ability to drive a little more heat to the bottom to help get the bottom crust crisp. Better than glass. Better than glass. And also like, I mean, again, you can bake a pie in anything. I, I right. bake a pie in cake pans sometimes. Right. You, it's, there's really no limit, but the, the advantage of metal and ceramic is metal in particular really drives the heat and like carries it. Right. Um, ceramic kind of holds on to it, which is nice when it's a long time of baking. Gotcha. And then Lauren, I was gonna ask if there's something specific, like your pies are so incredibly beautiful, all everybody's pies are, um, but is there some, like, do you want a particular kind of tin so that the design really shines? And if so, what is that? Um, I don't think that the designs are pan specific. I okay. mostly rely on a metal pan, but I okay. also give most of my pies and tarts away to friends, family, and neighbors. So I actually use the disposable aluminum you pans do. most of the time, yes. just so I don't have to worry about getting those plates back. Um, and they work perfectly well too. So sometimes I find that they're like a they seem to have a slightly smaller volume than my nine inch. Yeah. Pie. Do you find that too? It's like a yeah. little off. Yeah. Yeah. So I always have a little bit of extra. You can make a little mini pie, yeah. or um, usually I'm making a big batch at once. So you know all those kind of scraps and extra bits kind of something. collectively add up to one extra pie anyway. So okay. it works out. What about, Amanda, what about at the bakery? Uh, is it all disposable or is it not? No, so we use metal. We use metal at the bakery. Um, we use disposable if we're doing a high volume of pies. Like, so this weekend, so it's pie week at Crust. We do all, the menu is all single slices of pies. Um, so if you've ever been to Crust, we specialize in hand pies. 
They're very cute. They're very like festive. Um, I love the idea of entertaining. Um, and that's where it came to me that I wanted to do like smaller versions of pie. They're cute on a plate, passed around. So we do lots of those at the um, bakery, but we're doing pie week with slices of pie. And we have plenty of pie tins. We have metal, um, metal pie plates. Um, I don't really... I don't really like to bake in the glass, as Erin said. Um, I prefer either the ceramic or yeah. the metal as well. So yeah, if we're doing a lot, like this weekend, we are doing so many pies. So we'll have like cases of the tins on hand. Gotcha. And Lisa, I think I know from being in the bakery, but you guys are using metal, correct? Yeah, we're using the disposable aluminum tins. And one thing I do say to a lot of our pie class students is that you know, a reason we use the metal tins is not only because they're great conductors of heat, but oftentimes we're storing multiple crusts. And right now it's in the hundreds, uh, already crimped and chilling in our freezer. And I feel much better about transferring a frozen crust to a very hot oven when it's in a metal pan, uh, as opposed to if it was in a glass uh, really? pan. Yeah. yeah. It's that so much easier for stacking too. I mean, it's just like, Super simple. Perfect. Right. Because each one, obviously, they all they're all the same. Makes sense. All right, peeps, moving on to fillings. Aaron, that that conundrum where you filled your apple pie, your double crusted apple pie with apples, and then you put on your top and you're so excited, you put it in and it shrinks, and then the apples cook down, and then there's that big space between the top crust and the and the fruit. Talk to me about that. I'm so glad you asked because <laughs> this is just one of my favorite things to talk about as far as pie fillings are concerned. I feel like there are a lot of recipes that have gotten passed down that were printed in early cookbooks and printed in early magazines and passed down from our grandmas and whatever that tried to simplify the process of pie making. And in that process, some of the techniques that I, I don't understand like where they went. And one of those is pre-cooking pie filling. I, I don't understand why more people don't do it for fruit pie fillings. It's one of the ways to ensure a sliceable filling and, and specifically with apple pie, there's a lot more moisture in some varieties of apples than in others. And there's also a lot of flavor in some of those really high moisture apples, like things like honey crisp and, and, and things like that. So if you pre-cook the pie filling, you can reduce the moisture and thicken it appropriately before even baking. Then when it's in the oven for the bake, it's not gonna lose as much moisture and it's just not gonna separate from the crust in the same way. Gotcha, thank you. Um, and then I was gonna ask Lauren, I feel like I maybe I read something in your book about not, you were a little anxious about people piling too much fruit in one of your pies, was that right? Or did I make that up? Maybe because of the leaking onto the, the design on the top, like is there, do you think it's, you modify at all what the filling is gonna be to make sure that the beautiful geometric top can shine through as well? Um. I think for some designs, if I'm building directly on the pie, I will probably want it a little more level, maybe slightly domed in the center, but maybe not too piled up high, just so I can have a nice level work surface. Yep. Um, but otherwise, you know, we're eating pie for the pastry and the filling. So right. whatever you can cram in there is right. fine. And I will also say that um, I think sometimes people are worried about bubbling and juices when it's baking. I'm all for the bubbling and like the gooiness when it comes out. I think that's one of the best parts. So um, something to not be afraid of. Perfect. Um, and then um, Amanda, thickener of choice. Just I'll probably want, maybe we'll do a, another quick round of everybody saying, but what do you, arrowroot or cornstarch or flour, what do you like to thicken with? Sometimes arrowroot, but sometimes cornstarch. If I'm doing a heavy volume, it's just more cost effective. And yes. especially if you're balancing the flavors well, I think cornstarch works best for me. Okay, quickly, Erin, what's yours? I like cornstarch when I'm trying to get a glossy, um, like clear filling. And when I don't mind if it's a little bit more um, opaque, like an apple pie filling, I like to use flour actually for the same reason Lauren said earlier, just like one less thing, I already have it in the kitchen. Yes. So I like to use it a lot. 100%, Lisa? Uh, we we use tapioca flour slash starch. I like it because it doesn't impart any flavor. You can't really tell that it's there. And it produces a very natural style filling that is still thickened. Nice. Lauren? Uh, ditto what Lisa said. Yeah. I exclusively use tapioca starch and I use it for the same reasons she does. That's awesome. Um, 
Fruit or cream pie, Lisa, in the bakery? Is it all, or like, what do people love? Are people always gonna be going for a fruit pie? Or if you have some delicious creamy pie going on? I just wondered, like, I kind of, I think I'm a 50-50 person, but I really love cream pie. But I, I do love fruit too, but I just wondered what you find usually filling-wise floats people's boats. You know, we get a lot of people asking for blueberry pie every month of the year. So I think people are really into the fruit pies. We don't do cold cream pies at this point in time, but we do a banana pie that's not a banana cream. It's actually more like a banana chess. And if that's on the menu, people are going to get that over everything else. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Someone that's even funny. just commented, banana Pete. <laughs> right. um, this is just a quick one about toppings, but you know, everybody has a, I just was curious. I know at Sister Pie, it's whipped cream or a doll, or at least it was when I was there, a dollop of whipped cream with the pie. Is that correct, Lisa? Yep. Um, Amanda, ice cream, whipped cream. Are you, when you're serving up those slices like this weekend, do people get something on top or is it? Okay, like I'm going to tell you. Okay. I'm not really big on cream. Okay. I'm big on butter. So at the bakery, we do a lot of house butters. We have a brown sugar pumpkin butter that everybody is getting with their double crust yam pie. It's holiday season. I hope it's everyone's crazy. looking at Aaron's face. <laughs> I even posted on our Instagram how to like heat it up at home, put it in the cast iron, put the scoop of butter on top, um, let it caramelize in the oven. It's so good. <laughs> I, mean, I think I'm in love with you, Amanda. I'm sorry. I will leave. This is not my question. That is my topping of choice, butter. Yes. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. Thank you. I can't even, I don't, I thought maybe you'd say ice cream. No. So glad that I asked. Um, then, and then Lauren, what about you? Just, you're, again, I know I'm getting too focused on the way the pies look, but they're so beautiful that part of me is like, eat them with nothing. But do you have a little whipped cream? I, one thing I think Aaron and I both share, is this right, Aaron? A drizzle of heavy cream? That's one of my favorite. And I think I remember reading it's one of yours too, but Lauren, what floats your boat when you're topping a pie? Um, so I actually don't eat that many sweet pies because I don't have much of a sweet tooth. So again, I share most of what I make, but personally, if I am, ice cream is usually my go-to choice, but this butter situation is totally blowing my mind and I need to try it immediately. I so. know. I I was going to say, Jesse, in addition to, I used to love a drizzle of cold, heavy cream. Okay. That was like my thing on, yes. especially on a fruit pie, yes. but I have a new thing and it's, I call it whipped cream sauce, which is just really under whipped cream. And so it's like the consistency of creme anglaise. So when you spoon it over the pie, it like coats it. So when you're eating pumpkin pie, you get like some of that cream in like every bite. But that said, I might be moving to butter permanently. Can I just say, I feel my work is done because now everyone who was at this panel knows they need to get some butter and get some heavy cream slash in the creme anglaise style a la Aaron and like go to town with pie, yum. Okay. <laughs> um, I just have, let me just see what time. Oh, we still have a few minutes, I'm glad. These are just like tips, tricks, and trendy things that I was thinking about and wondering about and maybe thinking other people might be too. Amanda, rolling pins, um, tapered, handles? Like what should people be buying who like maybe are new to pie or are in the market for a new, a new rolling pin? Um, when it comes to rolling, I'm very old school. Okay. I am not only self-taught, I'm grandma taught. So it's important to me, like Lisa said, when you make, when you're making pie, it's about the experience. It's about like immersing yourself in those ingredients. Um, and for me, pie is a very personal place. So I love to use a classic rolling pin with handles because it just keeps me closer to home. And my grandma, she's at the bakery with me every weekend helping. So it's just like an homage. It's something that I started off with and I just can't see myself parting. I do love a French pin though but the handles are my favorite. And remind me, French means, is it the one that is, what's the one that's the same all the way? I, I, sometimes I can't speak. I'm so appalled. <laughs> Some of them get, what's the word I'm looking for at the so end? The French one is a long one that's like, it's long and it has the ends. You just use your hands to roll it just like that. So it doesn't taper or it does taper? It does taper, just, okay. just a tiny bit at the end. Gotcha. That's the one I'm thinking. Sometimes I can't think of a word like tapered. Like that cannot come to my brain. I do not know why. Um, 
Oh, here's one that I never do a back to my impatience problem. Lisa, do we need to chill our flour? Before oh, make, what um, do you think? I, I you don't know. Pie. I mean, I definitely, I, I recommend that if you are new to pie baking, specifically new to dough making, you're going to probably move a little bit more slowly and you're not totally going to know what to look for. So if you can chill the ingredients in advance, even the tools and the bowl that you use, you could chill in the fridge. That's going to kind of give you a, buy you a little extra time, but okay. you know, at the bakery, we don't chill the flour or anything. We're just working as fast as we can. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And then um, Aaron, I, I think I saw this maybe yesterday on Instagram, but now I can't remember the beautiful pie weights that you were maybe doing a um, giveaway with. So it made me think what, like I use rice. I don't know, I just have this brown rice that I keep in glass jars that I've had for a million years. What, do, is there a best pie weight? Does it matter? And then there's one final not thing, I think you mentioned this or someone mentioned it, of the importance of really filling high with your pie weight so that, well, talk to me. That's what I was gonna say is it doesn't really matter what the pie weight is uh, to me so much is that there's enough of them. So like some of these things that they sell in stores like pie chains, like I don't even know what that is for. It's not enough to weigh down the crust. It's like, I don't know what that is. Um, you'd need like 50 pie chains to have sufficiently fill a crust and weigh it down. But I like ceramic pie weights and it's only because they're, um, uh, reusable uh, forever, you know, like I can kind of yeah. consistently use them. And of course they do retain heat. So that's kind of an advent advantage when you're trying to get the crust evenly crisp. But for years before I had many sets of pie weights, um, I used beans and I would just rotate them out. Eventually things like beans and rice are gonna go rancid. Um, and so you will have to discard them. And I do also really like, I say a lot, I really like Stella Park's trick of using sugar. Um, it's great for especially home bakers because it's something that is an edible byproduct. You make this toasted sugar that you can still use. I'm making enough pies that like, I would have enough toasted sugar for the whole town that, it's not quite uh, sensical for me, but I have also used that tip when I've been in a situation like when I want to make pie and I, you know, don't carry my pie weights with me everywhere I go. So like <laughs> I've definitely used um, all kinds of things. Even once I washed and sanitized a bunch of pennies and used those with like three layers of, uh, you know, parchment to make sure they weren't actually touching the crust, right. but I was on vacation and so desperate for pie that I had to weigh it down with something. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, Lauren, I know you're going to get into this more with your demo, but I was really struck just in looking at your book and whatever, doing a little research um, about your thing about the tools that you need to make what you do are not tricky, complicated tools. They're things you originally back in the day bought on Amazon because they were cheap and seemed like they'd work. Can you talk a little bit about how people don't need to get so freaked out with pie making about needing an arsenal of specialty items. Yeah, totally. I mean, I'm a home baker baking out of my home kitchen for fun. So I'm not working in a professional bakery like everyone else here. Um, and, uh, you know, when I made my first pie on a whim a couple of years ago, I had just moved across the country. I was living in a tiny apartment. And so to even cut dough strips, I just used a knife and a cookie sheet as kind of that straight line guide. I didn't even know what a pastry wheel was. Um, so, you know, I talk a lot in the book about using what you have, um, just kind of looking around your kitchen, repurposing what you have to make it work for you. Um, and then in terms of actual equipment, there's no need to buy top of the line stuff. Um, you don't have to invest in really expensive equipment either if you don't want or if you can't. Um, you know, I have a simple rolling pin, a sharp knife, and now I have an actual ruler and a pastry wheel, which makes things go a little faster. But um, beyond that, everything else is just kind of a bonus if I have it. And there are ways to kind of get shapes and designs a couple different ways. So no need to have an extensive or fancy toolkit for sure. Awesome. I think I'm going to get cut off any minute because we're going to take some Q&As from the peeps who are watching. But quickly, a couple more things. Lisa, soggy bottom. Uh, would you do breadcrumbs, egg white, cookie crumbs, nothing, just par-bake? Do you guys have a thing at the bakery? Well, I think my answer might be really something you like hearing, Jesse, is that <laughs> when we do the fruit pies in the summertime, most often we are par-baking them if they have a crumble or a streusel on top. And 
or we're, we're doing a, a double crusted assembled pie with a raw crust to begin. But for both of those things, we do a little layer of cream cheese on the bottom. It creates this wonderful little seal. It's about two tablespoons of cream cheese that we just spread on with an offset spatula or the back of a spoon. And it does wonders in helping to keep that bottom not soggy. Or I'm, I'm, I'm basically gonna have to start copying you. I promise to give you tons of credit, but that's genius. <clears throat> and I always have cream cheese because I adore it. <laughs> um, um, location in the oven, Aaron. How important is that? You know, people be like, put it at, put it on the bottom of your, put your pie on the bottom of your oven, put it on the top of your oven, get a pizza stone, get a cookie sheet, and make sure the cookie sheet is hot before you put, blah, blah, blah. Talk to me. Okay, sorry, I get so excited. I like, I'm ready to talk about it. I like to bake it in the lower rack of the oven. And this is something I actually learned more recently as in I didn't do it when I, I did not do it for most of my life. But part of the reason I haven't done it for most of my life is because I was making lots of pies at once. So the pies went wherever in the oven they were going to fit. Um, but I have discovered that, especially for home bakers, I think baking in the lower part of the oven not only helps get that bottom crust baked, but it also helps prevent the top and the edges from over browning because they're further away from some of the primary heat sources. So I really like that. And I will also say, just because there've been a couple of questions on the side about it, I do strongly recommend using a baking steel or a pizza stone if you have it. You don't need to for every kind of pie. I especially like it for double crust pies to make sure that they really get that little bit of extra help on the bottom bottom crust. Again, those are kind of some home specific things like, but I do think that um, that the lower rack is great for that reason. Awesome. And then Amanda kind of connected, but if we if we are worrying about our, our um, edges or our top crust over baking, because one thing I didn't even mention to everyone, but I'm, I know we'll all agree, like with a fruit filling, it's really important people don't understand the middle has to, tell me if I'm wrong, peeps, because you guys are the experts, but the middle has to have bubbles in it. You have to look through that vent. Yeah. The bubbles so bubbles that's are important and that it, takes longer than people think how do you protect, yes. how do you protect the crust so it doesn't get too dark while you're waiting for that fruit bubble well i think i think that sometimes when you're thinking about it being too dark i think that complexion on pie is more of like a preference like give it the time that it needs to be if it's getting too dark i use i like to use like parchment because with aluminum, sometimes it'll still kind of brown a little faster. So I use like parchment. Sometimes I'll even tuck it underneath of the pie that helps create like a little, that push that heat down into the pie. So I'll either use parchment or if I'm baking something at home, you have like, you can put um, foil around the edges of the pie to protect it. Um, it just varies, you know, just patience is the virtue when it comes to pie. You know, you don't want a soggy pie. You don't want to slice and everything's running. So just give it the time that it needs to bake. Don't take recipes. <laughs> when it says a certain temperature, please bake it at that temperature because we have tried these recipes. They are true. And, you know, it's not like a guide. It's like, please use this as we <laughs> create it. I um, but yeah, just patience and, you know, sticking that foil in or the parchment, it really helps. Yeah. The parchment's a great one. I didn't Yeah, I love the parchment. I love the parchment. Uh, one more thing about about like trending pies in the bakery right now. Amanda, I know you have a yam and a sweet potato pie that's already sold out for your Thanksgiving sales, which is amazing. <laughs> yeah. We, is that like a hot or is the yam one a hot one this year? Is it one? It you, is. It is a hot one this year. And I think because so of course, I think like sweet potato is always like the go-to when people order it's sweet potato or a classic apple. But I feel like we are not in ordinary times and people are excited to see like, you know, that we're taking the time to create things for them that are different, that push the envelope, that might not necessarily be the norm, but it's still coming from a place of like, we care about you. This will be great. Try this out. So I feel like because I had a lot of questions when it came to the yam pie and they were like, I don't really know what this is. I don't even care. I'm going to try it. I think we were just excited to try something new. Um, so as we're building menus and we're creating new things, you know, just knowing that we're all in this together, you know, like we just want some warmth, some something that's fun. I think that is what uh, kind of encouraged people to like, I'm going to buy this. It was the first to sell out. Um, and it might've been the butter too. <laughs> It might have been the butter, but I think people are interested in trying something new and fun and different because we're in different times. 
Very cool. Um, Lisa, is there a hot pie at Sister Pie right now, would you say? Like, do you guys have, I know your cranberry one, at least I imagine historically does really well uh, uh, with the crumb topping, right? Am I getting that? Is that, yeah, that is right. Yeah, actually our pie sold out in a record seven hours this year. Um, we are doing all uh, pre-order sales to avoid kind of like pandemonium at the door. Yeah. Um, so I guess they're all pretty hot, but <laughs> my favorite is the cranberry crumble. And I think that is one of the first ones to sell out. I like it because it's super tart and Michigan is a, like one of the biggest growers of cranberries around. So it, it feels like a true love letter to our state. That's awesome. That's awesome. And Aaron or Lauren, are you like thinking this holiday, do you have like a particular pie that you're excited about sharing? I know we'll all be doing small-ish holiday celebrations, but like Lauren, can you talk us through a little bit of what you'll be making um, this year? Yeah, so um, obviously I'll be staying home, staying cozy, and it's just my partner and I at home. Um, but every year I make this butternut bacon mac and cheese pie that has a whole wheat cheddar chive crust, and that's in my book. Um, but it's kind of become this tradition, so I'm pretty sure that will be top of my list. It's great because you get to eat it for dinner, um, and then you get food coma, and we're all staying home anyway. So just, you know, transition from the dining table straight to your couch with your sweatpants on, climb under the blankets, and you're good for the evening, and you'll have dinner for tomorrow as well. So uh, that's one pie I'm for sure making this season. I might be too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. How about I might you? be too. <laughs> How about you, Erin? Um, I think this year uh, I'm in a similar boat. It's, uh, it's just my husband and my dog and I. So I was thinking we might have uh, two pies all the same. Not a pie per person, but a pie for dinner and a pie for dessert. So I think I'm going to do a big turkey pot pie this year and, and yeah. we'll keep it Thanksgiving-y that way. But I'm, I'm with Amanda and actually everybody, because we've all kind of mentioned at this point, I adore savory pies. They are actually some of my favorite. And so I have been making a lot of them as it gets into fall and winter. And I, um, somebody on my Instagram said, I, I want to declare this the winter of savory pies. And I really liked that because I was like, yeah, we're all going to be home. Let's all just be eating a lot of like really delicious savory pies covered in cheese, et cetera. Awesome. So I think that I might have a little more time. I'm not sure. So I'm going to answer. I'm going to ask some of the Q&A or bring some of the Q&As to your guys' attention that are in this list. I hadn't been looking, so I apologize. Um, and obviously, Carrie or Donna or Kat, let me know if we need to kind of wrap up. But um, this is a great question. Um, I guess kind of back to the par baking. Would you please share your par baking tips? What tools do you use for how long? Um, I'll let whoever wants to take that, take it. Or maybe, oh, there's Carrie. Oh, hi. Did I Just, keep going or should we pause? Yeah, you know what? There are so many questions. I think we're oh. up to 26 questions in oh, the okay. Q&A box and a lot of questions uh, in, the, um, in the chat. So we've been writing down all the questions. So we're going to get to a few of them. This has been amazing. I personally could listen to all of you talk for another hour about this. Um, and Jess, you are an amazing moderator. I think we're gonna ask you to moderate everything from now on. Um, so let's do a few questions uh, and then we're gonna go to Lauren's demo. So why don't you pick like three and then the just so everybody knows the Cherry Bomb team and I have written down and taken photos of all the questions. So we'll get the panelists to answer the questions and we'll get them answered on Instagram. Okay, we, we'll in answer them on Instagram stories or something for everybody, all right? Perfect. I'll just okay. throw out a few. I, this one I do think is nice because we brought up par baking, but we didn't totally talk about the tools. Um, Lauren, do you mind taking this one? The question is just like tips you have when you par bake. Onions. Um, I like to freeze my crust solid, especially if I'm par baking. That way, um, as I line it with foil, it doesn't get any of those kind of foil creases or dents. Um, and that way, uh, the crimp design or the edge um, kind of maintains its integrity as it's baking. So I like a frozen pie shell, I line it tightly with foil, and then I dump whatever pie weights I have on hand. Like you, I have a container of brown rice that has been around forever. I just reuse that forever. Um, fill it up all the way to the edge um, and then bake that for you know 20 to 30 minutes, pull it out, make sure it's 
ready to go. And then I bake, rebake the pie shell without the foil and the pie weights until it's dry and, you know, starting to get golden. Awesome. Thank you. Um, this might be a good one for Erin because I feel like this happens to her all the time. How do you go about making a mass amount of pie in a home kitchen? I have a really good assistant. <laughs> No, um, I, I, we make, we do, we, there's two of us and we're typically making a lot of pies here. We do have two ovens. So that is already one thing that's different from a typical home. Not everybody has two ovens. I recognize that. However, our second oven is down a very steep flight of stairs. So that's how we earn more slices for later is all the up and down the stairs that we do in the process. Um, one of the best things you can do when you're trying to make a lot of pies is just focus on how much of it can be done ahead. You said earlier that, um, you know, pie requires patience. And I think that that's true, but I also think it gets a bad rap for taking a long time when so much of the time is hands off. Like, you know, you make the dough that only takes like 10 minutes and then you chill it for a few hours or however long you're going to chill it but you're not doing anything during that time. So you can be pre-cooking your filling or doing other stuff. It's another reason why I like some of these things, ideas of cooking, pre-cooking the pie filling. That's something you can do ahead and hold the filling in the fridge. You can make the dough ahead and refrigerate it for up to three days or freeze it if you're gonna make it ahead even further. So there's really a lot you can do when you're making pies ahead. And I think that that's the way to then set, to go from making like one or two pies to I think the record that we have in one day is like 28 in this house. So from like the full thing, that's I know that's nothing compared to Lisa and Amanda, but for a little home kitchen, that that is a lot of pie. Even with two stove ovens. Um, this one might be good, Lisa. I'm not sure what you guys do in the bakery, but um, somebody's torn between using canned pumpkin or roasting a sugar pumpkin. I personally have actually never done anything but canned pumpkin, but I'm imagining you might have. Is that true? Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, I'm kind of like, I'm not really like a big pumpkin pie person. We actually don't even have pumpkin pie on our menu this year. Um, however, one of my favorite tricks that I did is kind of half and half. Um, in our cookbook, we have a cardamom tahini squash pie, which is kind of like our version of pumpkin pie. And we roast some squash and then we mix it with canned pumpkin. And so you get kind of like the good feeling and taste from local squash, but then the canned pumpkin kind of like smooths the filling out a little bit so you can find some more consistency, especially when you're baking a lot of pumpkin pie. And so that's kind of my um, opinion. And I think it's harder to control the moisture content in uh, when you're kind of pureeing your own squash and, and things like that. So, um, if you can find some good local, like we actually have a great locally um, made organic pumpkin in a can here in Michigan. So oh. maybe you to come to Michigan, <laughs> move here, okay, and well. that can. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna end, Amanda, this isn't a question, but somebody said, please all caps, give us the recipe for your brown sugar pumpkin butter. <laughs> it sounds just incredible. <laughs> You know what? I may. I may. That means I won't have to make as much. Yeah, I think we all want it as well. So feel free to share. And um, Carrie. Oh, there's Carrie. She's oh, back. I'm back. That was actually going to be my last question before we went to the demo. So Amanda, I don't know if you want to tell people now or you want to put it on your Instagram or sell it for a I'll dollar. I'll put it on Instagram because it takes some, it's a, it's a little steps. Got all it. Right, I'll, I'll give it to you. We can do it on uh, Cherry Bomb. <laughs> I think you should sell it, sell it for a dollar. <laughs> I would, who would, tell us in the comments, who would, I'd pay more than a dollar for that recipe. Um, but anyway, everybody, this was amazing. I think we are going to have, someone said I'd pay way more than a dollar. Um, uh, I think we're going to have to schedule a part two pie talk. Maybe, you know, for, we're going to do a holiday baking thing or maybe a part two for Thanksgiving because I know you all have so much time on your hands Thanksgiving week. Um, but I can't thank you all enough. Uh, Jesse, like I said, has a wonderful book, which I have right here, The Vintage Baker. Um, Jesse's also a TikTok star now. If you're not following Jesse on TikTok, you should. Lauren also has a fantastic book we're going to talk about a little bit more during the demo. Lisa, I love the Sister Pie book and I love Sister Pie. Amanda, we've got Crust by Mac. You're brand new. You are brave enough to open a bakery during a pandemic. God bless. And we're so happy. It's going well. If you have friends in Baltimore, spread the word. And Erin, the book on pie, you've got a gorgeous new cookbook that's out right now. 
congratulations on that. Um, so uh, this gave you a little bit of, of a taste of all these folks and you can go out and experience some more from all of them. This was wonderful. Um, and again, everybody's questions, we will answer them in some capacity on Instagram or on cherrybomb.com, okay? So thank you, the questions were amazing and uh, you are such an engaged audience, we loved it. All right, everybody, this is goodbye for now. Have a wonderful holiday.